Hey guys, welcome back to Blender New Hair Series. Today we're talk today we're in episode 7. We're going to talk about a geometry nodes and how we can use it to control hair. We're going to start simple and ramp up to more complex stuff. So, let's cue the intro and get started. Okay, so here we have a really bad hair setup. Uh, just to demonstrate a very simple, um, like beginner level geometry node setup. So the first thing you're gonna do, you might notice that if you created hairs, you might notice that your hairs are really thick looking and not, this happens because the hairs are too thick. So how do you adjust this? Well, you can adjust this with geometry nodes. So let's quickly switch into, first go into the geometry nodes. Uh, context and over here we can see uh, this is the geometry node screen so over here you have the spreadsheet and here you have the graph and here you have the viewport there is already a node setup so you can see it's called surface def uh, surface deform and it um, has a single node called deform curves to surface and this is a node that basically causes the curves to automatically adjust to the surface this is basically the basic initial setup it always starts by adding this geometry node and now we, if you want to you can continue editing in this section you can just add more nodes here and that's fine i don't like to do that because I prefer to keep like uh, if you're a programmer you might know it's called um, single responsibility something it's basically you just have separate or uh, separate geometry node modifiers with its own self-contained effect separately and that just makes things a little easier to manage and you can always save these node setups and uh, share them around and you can share these effects so let's start with the first effect of correcting the resolution well, or rather the thickness to do that in the modifier tab you click add modifier and you add a new geometry node so let's call this set curve radius or set hair radius if you have already created a few of these you can just use it here so I have already created a few but um, we're gonna start from scratch with a new one so we're gonna create a new one and I'm gonna call this like so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press shift a and I'm going to select a node from this menu so you can type it just click here and type it or you can click on uh, curve and you can find it and there's something called set curve radius this is the one we want so i'm gonna click on this and i'm gonna add it to this curve this curve uh controls the radius of the hair so if i increase this it gets thicker and thicker and we can make it smaller as well okay so let's let's go with something like uh, point 0.1 okay you can see this is what point 0.1 look, point zero zero 0.001 looks like if you go one more level we can get even thinner and this is looking more realistic so this this set curve radius on its own is just fine you can always come back here but this is not how I like to work I like to create a self-contained node group and that all the controls be on the modifier stack so that later if I want to I don't have to come back into this menu and kind of fiddle around so that's a bit of a nuisance right so the easiest way to do this is to kind of set uh, these you can say for example this is the value I'm changing I can just drag it out and then connect it to the input when you connect it to the input it immediately adds a sort of control so you lose the control over here but you you add the control on the modifier stack thingy itself okay so cool now the next thing i want to do is i've added this control here but i just want to make sure that the range makes sense so you can see that this range is like 0 0.0001 uh, but if you try to alter it the range is quite huge so I want to put the minimum if you if you click this one and then you can see if this menu is not available if you just press N when your mouse is in this section you can get the end menu of uh, let's call it end panel of uh, the node graph and over here you can see the inputs so because I've dragged the radius here it's had an input called radius which is named radius you can add a tooltip and say this sets a radius of the hair okay and you, you can put a default value so just keep it at this and then the minimum value maybe this is the minimum and then you can set a higher okay so this is the minimum this is the maximum so minimum 0 0.001 maximum is 10 times that so now we can kind of increase this to a maximum of this and decrease it to this this way you don't have insane values you can just keep 
keep things within a certain range. But we also want the ability to control this minimum and maximum as well, right? We want to be able to scale this. Well, the way we're gonna, uh, the way I'm gonna do that is I'm going to sort of um, what we're gonna do is what to change this value. What we can do is we can use some math nodes, so we can add a math node over here and change this to multiply. Okay, and whenever you want to scale a value, you can just uh, set it to multiply, and we're gonna multiply it like this with a new value. Okay, so let's we just set this to one. It'll just be the default value. We can reduce this. Okay, so what do I want to multiply this by? The reason why I'm I'm using this multiply is really so, so that I could control the thickness of the hair along this length. You know, it's evenly thick now from the tip to the top. You know, that's not what we want. Now, hair usually is thicker on the roots and thinner on the tip. So, so how do we change that? Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna multiply this by a a, a, a variable that will reduce the thickness of so what variable can we do so there's a variable called on, on the curve menu there's a variable called spline parameter and this gives you three factors okay so the first one is just basically a value it's basically along the length of the hair it goes from like uh, one to zero i think okay and uh or or zero to one yeah zero to one so it starts at zero and it goes to one so basically the value the, so the, the factor value at the base is zero and the factor value at the tip of any hair is one okay so it's like a sort of percentage and the factor if i were to plug this in you'll see it immediately makes the the hair zero thickness at the base and maximum thickness at tips okay now this is no good because the the hair is not thin at the base it's thin at the tips so we need to sort of invert this there's many ways to do this but the easiest way well, is this map range you go to utilities you go map range and drop that in there okay so what the map range does is it takes a value from zero to one okay and you, or, or any value and and you define where it starts so we know the factor starts from zero and it goes all the way up to one so that's the range of this value and we remap this to a different range. So we say, we just invert it. We say the minimum should be one and the maximum should be zero. And by doing that, we're just saying, okay, every time we, the factor is zero, make it one. And every time the factor is one, make it zero. And everything in between, just invert it accordingly. That's what the map range does. It allows you to sort of map one range to a different range. Cool, so now we have inverted this and we have got control here. The problem is, what if you actually don't want this fade as much? You, you want to sort of control how fast it fades. Well, for that, you can control this maximum section. You see this? When I increase or decrease the maximum, I'm actually controlling the, the range, uh, the, the distance. of. So if I, if I bring this all the way to 1, I increase it there. I can even increase it beyond 1 and just, you know, make it thicker at the end if I so desire. Okay? So... I, I want that control as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add this to the max, and I'm going to call this two max. I'm going to change this. I'm going to call this end fade, okay? Just to re remind me that that's um, fading the tip, okay? And by default, I want to keep it at zero, but the minimum value is zero, and the maximum value is going to be one because I, I just don't want wild values, okay? You can make this, for example, three, and then you know make your hair thicker at the end if you if you want to, but. I feel like that's unnecessary, so I'm going to go with this. And this gives me a sort of control. If I want a thicker hair, I'll just increase it all the way to like 0.8. If I want a thinner hair, reduce it. So that's how you can create like different types of hair with this. So this node setup is really simple, but it's also really powerful because uh, it allows you to control this now. If I was you, what I would do is I would save this using this fake user. So when you close this file, you, to, you remove this from this character and you want to add it to a new character in the same file, you can um, just add it back because it's saved as a fake user. See, all of these are fake users saved. It's not applied to any character, so the fake user prevents it from being deleted when you close the file. And if you wanted to share this, what you could do is you could select all of these, I believe, and uh, you could um, right-click and make it a group. You can um, export this node group. Okay, so you can see here there's a new input here. You can just change these values to the correct names. So that's an effective way to uh, 
share things. So you can name this node group and it's going to be addable. So for example, if you go to groups, you can see you can add these. Yeah. So I just added another one which is the same thing. And cool. So I think we're going to end the video with this one because I want to cover more complex node setups, but I, I, I rather take this one at a time so you can warm up to the different kinds of nodes because it can get a little complicated and I'm still learning myself. So I'm going to take it easy for you. So thank you very much for tuning in and I'll catch you in the next one.